Each year, I attempt to judge whether to support the budget based on how well it helps those who cannot help themselves. It's easy to pontificate about maintaining a social safety net. It's another to commit the financial support needed to craft and su sustain the programs that are making a difference in our Commonwealth. I'm pleased to say that this budget is one I can support. Mr. Speaker, this budget without raising taxes bolsters the investment we make in caring for adults with intellectual disabilities. Many of the families who care for an adult child with special needs have done so for many years, while they have patiently waited for their turn to obtain the desperately needed services they require to properly care for their family member. It's time to help these families, and this budget helps to accomplish this objective. The Intellectual Disabilities Community Waiver Program will receive an additional $84.8 million. Mr. Speaker, that's 5.2% increase. This line item has been underfunded and even cut for decades, and this budget moves the funding in the proper direction as it relates to caring for adults with special needs. The budget also includes funds to provide home and community-based care for 865 individuals currently on the emergency waiting list. Mr. Speaker, many of these families who have an adult child with special needs or an intellectual disability care for their loved one at home. The primary caregivers for most of these families are parents, many of whom are well into their 90s. I repeat that. Many of these caregivers are well into their 90s, struggling with age and health-related issues themselves. These adults with intellectual disabilities truly represent one of our most vulnerable populations in Pennsylvania, and we have a responsibility to them. Mr. Speaker, another aspect of this budget that deserves mention is the maintenance, main, maintenance of funding that's been given to the mission of assisting those who suffer from Tourette syndrome. In the past, this line, has been, line item has been zeroed out from time to time, but this year, we maintain the investment we've made in the past. Thousands of school children in Pennsylvania have been identified as having Tourette syndrome, and many more go undiagnosed or have chosen not to be identified at all for fear of being stigmatized. The funding in question affords Pennsylvania residents diagnosed with Tourette syndrome and their family members the opportunity to obtain the services and supports they need. The services that will be provided as a result of this funding include information and referral, outreach programs, a dynamic website, a toll-free hotline for parents, teachers, caregivers, newsletters, support groups across the Commonwealth, non-legal advocacy, and a family conference. The funding will also provide information and training to schools, teachers, counselors, coaches, nurses, speech pathologists, family members, and peers. To help the community at large, the funding will provide training and outreach to underserved areas of our Commonwealth, including the most rural communities, Mr. Speaker, and some of the most dangerous neighborhoods of the inner city. Many parents who care for a child with Tourette syndrome cannot afford legal counsel nor an advocate and need assistance in navigating the complicated IEP protocol and due process. Mr. Speaker, we never get everything we want in any budget, but this budget goes a long way to helping those with special needs. Platitudes alone won't solve the problems associated with a disability, but we must properly fund the programs that help those with special needs find success in a world of challenges. A disability is not insurmountable. It's just an obstacle like any other, but it's up to us to provide the tools so parents can teach their child how to deal with those obstacles without becoming discouraged or overwhelmed. In this budget, we're stepping up and meeting our responsibilities in that regard. And I urge my colleagues to join me in supporting this budget. 